Okay, I think we'll get started now. So hi, everybody. My name is Sophia Pascuzo. I am the Customer Marketing Associate at RKL eSolutions. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join our webinar, Four Ways to Go Paperless with Document Management. The goal is to show you a more effective way of managing everyday business processes by going paperless, so you can automate and streamline your critical business processes and reduce costs. Our presenter is Perry Lynn Silkwood. She's the sales director uh, for Alltech with over 20 years of experience in the accounting application space. Perry Lynn has been featured as a subject matter expert speaker at numerous industry events and is adept at helping small to mid-sized com mid companies with state-of-the-art tools and knowledge to successfully streamline business processes and drive down costs. A quick note before I turn the meeting over to Perry Lynn, a reminder to keep all mics turned off and to please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen for any questions. We will try to answer them throughout or at the end of the presentation. Perry Lynn, I'm going to turn the webinar over to you to get started. Wonderful, thank you very, very much. And hello everyone, super, super delighted to have this opportunity to really chat with you all today and kind of stimulate some, some thinking and some really querying uh, as to how you're doing business today and how we can really help drive productivity, which generally relates to cost savings. So let's talk for a moment first about digital transformation. And we hear this word in the marketplace often, and it can be referring to many, many different kind of aspects of an organization. But when we think about digital transformation as it relates to document management and business process automation, we're really talking about digitizing all images and documents and connecting the right people and the right processes and the right data so that you can make critical business decisions. And that's really what we're going to cover today is thinking about how are you doing business manually today? Where are those areas of improvement? And then kind of what are some next steps that we can take together? So let's start off because I want to find out a little bit about what's going on with you, right? Tell me through a poll how we can, you know, what you're, what you're experiencing today. Um, most people have probably been inspired to attend the webinar because they are experiencing these issues. So it might be that you cannot find the documents that you need quickly and agilely. It may be that you're spending an inordinate amount of time at filing cabinets, or maybe you made the leap to a network file share, but there's still a lot of manual processes getting those documents in, uh, which of course can result in broken links and things of that nature. Uh, you may be storing documents on warehouse floors and that has a cost calculation right, related to that and time, especially when it comes about audits. Um, or it may be that you're looking for something different. Uh, so give me a little bit of uh, feedback and maybe using the poll here, tell me what is going on with your organization. And then Sophia, maybe I'll come back to you and, and you can kind of give me an idea of what's going on. And if you're seeing any kind of trend on some of these choices that we're seeing here in the poll, what do you think? So we're still getting some answers in right now, but okay. it looks like a lot, uh, lots of time spending filing and refiling. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. So that's interesting. So, and in, in I'm finding that organizations kind of fall in two buckets. Um, either they, you know, because of the pandemic, they had to make some quick, quick choices and other folks, they were able to kind of maintain as is, which typically would mean manual documents and manual processes. All right. So let's explore how we can provide solutions to all of these different areas. So we're going to start exploring why go paperless, right? What are the traditional business benefits that you can, um, you know, reap as an organization? by going paperless. And then we're gonna start exploring the different areas. So what does it mean to go paperless in AP or procure to pay or quote to, um, what does it mean on the quote to cash side of the house, right? HR, contract management. 
And then as we go through these business processes, I really want to challenge you to think about, all right, I'm starting to get a flavor here, right? We capture a document, you put it through a business process, you can update your ERP or financial accounting software, and then documents are available for search and retrieval. So we're going to kind of be using that as our metaphor. All right. Oh, and I'm seeing the poll results. The the um, the poll result results. There we go. Flashing here on the screen. Yes. So lots of time spent filing and refiling. Okay. We're gonna have some fun with that later on. And then it looks like we've got a bit of a tie here on some of the other areas. Uh, and maybe not too many people using the network file share option. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's start our journey together. So why go paperless, right? So just think about your day-to-day -day business processes today, right? And if I was to ask you questions like, well, hey, you know, can you have easy access to the documents? So as soon as you want something, are you able to get easy access? Most people cannot. And if you're storing documents in filing cabinets or they're on someone else's desk or they're out on the warehouse or something else, it's very difficult to, you know, be able to instantly retrieve a document in order to answer a question, whether that's an internal question or an external question. Um, many people are wanting to streamline manual business processes, and we're going to um, get a little bit more specific on this as well. But what I'm talking about is think about if you have a document that comes in and we want to process this document then we can move it to someone else, right? So maybe I'm physically walking it to someone else's desk. And now that that document's on their desk, I no longer have visibility or control of that document. And that document is typically related to the transaction. So already we're seeing a broken chain in that communication. Let's say the document moves through the approval process and now it's back to someone's desk and they're gonna physically create the transaction. Right, that's a lot of time. And so what we're suggesting here is that through the use of document management and workflow automation, you have an opportunity to minimize or eliminate data entry and really drive productivity in the organization. And we're going to talk about that more deeply as well, because it's not just about minimizing the data entry and saving some time, but it's about well, what else does that impact? Does that enable your organization to grow without adding headcount? You know, there's a lot of additional benefits that you'll be able to experience. Okay, we've got automated document delivery. We're gonna cover how we can really help you on either sending purchase orders out to a vendor automatically or an AR invoice or sales order um, uh, acknowledgement right out automatically. Those are all things that you can do and stop using kind of like the, the person to do that when technology can easily do it and then free up that person so that they can do more kind of strategic work, okay? All right, and you see these two other boxes. We wanna have a solution anytime in our organization that we're introducing technology is it already integrated with the platforms that you have in-house, right? So that becomes really important as well because behind the scenes, you wanna make sure that you're leveraging all the technology and you're not spending extra money to uh, create you know, custom, custom work if, if you can avoid it, right? And then simplify audits, simply meaning that if you have documents at your fingertips and within a you know, few seconds, you can grab documents, you're going to be able to greatly more satisfy audits and be able to produce documents very, very quickly. All right, let's continue on. So I love this slide because I really think it says, let's, let's just imagine for a moment that we've got documents at our fingertips that within you know, moments we will be able to pull open entire document packets, whether it's a, you know, an invoice packet that has like the purchase order and then the, uh, the packing slip and any receiving information or emails and the invoice and a copy of the payment record. Within moments, you know, maybe we're actually trying to get something on the sales side of the house. Maybe it's all documents linked by a particular part number or sales order number, you know, or customer PO. 
What would that mean to your organization? Can you start imagining how transformative that will be? You know, so it's all possible, especially with DocLink, uh, because it truly is an enterprise-wide document management tool. And I'll kind of introduce DocLink more specifically as we go about it. Let's kind of hit on some of the top level benefits. And these are things that I want you to be thinking about as an organization. Um, it may be depending on your role that you have to kind of build a case, right? And present it to upper management to say, hey, listen, you know, we have found a way to streamline our business process. The cost of doing business is X. You know what? The cost of the solution is Y. And here we go. You, we would like to request these funds for a purchase. And that way you've you've brought a very, very thoughtful analysis to the organization uh, to be able to pursue that, that technology purchase. But in my mind, I really think about the benefits to the organization kind of falling in these three buckets. And depending on where you are in the overall kind of chain of operations, um, th these may relate to you in more, you know, more specifically. So at the highest level, we've got strategic initiatives. So aligning ourselves with what's going on in the organization at the highest level. Um, are we trying to grow without adding headcount? You know, are we trying to really, um, uh, you know, avoid late fees and go after early pay discounts? You know, so these are some of the thought processes that we can think about. Um, in order to achieve those, then we have to really investigate what's going on. Why are we not able to achieve these things or how can we structure the organization to achieve them better? So, you know, where can we find time savings? You know, and time savings usually has some kind of calculation. You know, are there actual hard dollar cost savings that we can really, you know, go after? You know, the answer is yes, especially when we start talking about AP automation or the quote to cash side of the house. It just means that we need to unpeel the layers a little bit and start doing some um, investigative work on what's going on in the business today. You know, what are the bottlenecks in each of the processes, you know, and then uh, we're able to find that solution. So let's kind of think about it in these ways. So if I was to kind of counsel with you on how you could, you know, begin an evaluation, it would be uh, understanding, you know, what is the strategic, you know, growth of the organization. And these all kind of relate to one another, right? So, um, you know, what's going on at the highest level and how can we align ourselves with that? The next step is going to be investigating really the business processes and start thinking about, you know, what's going on in the organization. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about business mapping in a little while, uh, but in my mind, if we can think about where the processes are broken, what is the cost of doing business manually, then it really enables us to um, easily lay software solutions over those issues and drive productivity. And, you, and if we look about it just through the lens of accounts payable, we can kind of think about it like this, a very simple thought, right? How many people do you have in AP today? You know, what is their average, you know, cost, fully loaded cost? Um, what are the average late fees that you're, that you're paying or a missed opportunity cost of going after early pay discounts? And, you know, what are some of the costs um, based on the, you know, amount of lost invoices? And it could be very minimal. You're probably going to see more savings on the time savings area. Um, but that is going to help you kind of start building that cost equation. So let me introduce you to DocLink. DocLink is truly an enterprise-wide document management and workflow tool. It is all about helping organizations you know, drive productivity in inefficient business processes. It's about eliminating manual data entry and, and really driving that you know, growth in an organization. Um, and it does have many, many different tools available in order to um, create a full solution. So it could be that you want to start at the very, very beginning, which is just storing all documents in a centralized area. That would be one way. And being able to access them through different tools, whether it's on the web or a mobile device, 
Right? So we call this maybe a document library. Next level is you can actually use DocLink for business process automation. So all of it's possible in terms of bringing a document into DocLink and then routing it through your organization for the purposes of approval, right? And then we have a deep integration into many of the financial accounting applications that are out there. Um, so you are able to view documents right within the ERP screens. You're able to leverage that ERP data uh, in order to help eliminate data entry. You know, there's bi-directional pushing of data, you know, so that, you know, it's all about thinking about how can we capture that document electronically, capture the data, and now instead of having someone do manual data entry, kind of push and pull that data, you know, to drive efficiency in the organization. Any document is, is possible with DocLink. Any document, any report, any file type. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities in terms of how it can be utilized in an organization. So let's kind of go a little bit deeper and explore those departments and how you might want to use a DocLink or document management and workflow tool set uh, to drive these business benefits. So here are our the areas that we're going to explore today. Uh, so number one is we procure to pay or AP automation. You know, it's so funny. Um, the more and more time I spend in the space, the more and more different kind of words that we have to describe it. Um, I hear AP automation often, but, you know, AP is not in the purchasing side and we still, you know, can manage the purchasing side of the house as well. So I want to make sure that we're kind of being a little bit more inclusive in our words, if you will. All right, let's tackle this one. So why do we want to start there? Uh, mostly because it's a wash in paper. And we've got some very specific things that people are trying to achieve uh, when we're talking about automating accounts payable. So in specific in accounts payable, we're generally seeing the need for these kind of four areas. So people are spending a lot of time doing two-way or three-way matching, right? Joining these documents together bringing their eyes down all the line items for every single invoice that arrives in the organization. And what we're trying to do there is to say, hey, listen, we can automate that. We can have the computer grab the image, grab the data, compare back to the table information. And that way, you're then able to transition the organization into managing by exception and no longer having to touch every single document, right? So if you think about, well, gosh, how many invoices match, you know, with 100% of, you know, what was received and what was on the purchase order? Most organizations are reporting back that it's on upwards of 70% or greater. So that's good news. And if that's the case and it matches 100%, we shouldn't have to touch it, right? It can be transacted automatically. Approvals. This continues to be at the top of the list whenever I do any kind of trend analysis. People want to make sure that the right approver can get their document Review it, approve it. If they are participating in coding, they can code it and get it right back so we have better management of that overall business process. Minimizing data entry is huge, right? And eliminating filing, that manual filing process. Why? Because we don't want to have to touch these documents. We don't want to have to do data entry when the technology is available to grab that, that data automatically. And then self-service document access. This also is really critical because again, at the top of the hour, we talked about connecting the right people and the right documents. What would it mean to your organization and to the departments if we could say, well, we can set up the users with secure access, limit what they have um, access to. So they're only able to see the documents that really, really pertain to them. And how much would that eliminate people asking questions or not putting documents back, right? So there's a lot of gains to be to be had there. And of course, we always wanna talk about the component of having seamless integration with your financial accounting or ERP solution, because that's critical as well. 
Um, not only does it make it easier for the user's adoption, uh, but it also makes it easier throughout the process. All right, let's explore some of the ROI. So for me, one of my all-time favorite things to do is to kind of map out business processes with organizations and really kind of get into some of the details about, well, what does it cost you to do business today, right? What is the cost of this manual business process? So I went through this exercise, um, I do it all day, every day, you know, but recently, and I wanted to map this out for you. So this was an organization and they get about 75 invoices a day. And those invoices, they arrive via email and mail and there's a percent split. And so we started thinking about, okay, let's outline what it takes to get that through to payment. So they're opening the mail, you know, or they're printing it if it came off of email, and then they're applying a date stamp, and then they're writing GL code information, and then they're sending it out to a series of managers to get that approved, and then it comes back to AP, AP's doing entry, you know, they're cutting the check, they're attaching the check to that stack of documents, that's getting um, signed off. And then they mail the check and then they're filing away the cap, you know, the, the document stacks into the filing cabinets, right? I bet you if I said, hey, is that what you guys are doing today? Nearly all of you would probably raise your hand. But now we want to say, all right, well, then let's start thinking about how much time it takes to do each of these steps, right? And then going back through the, to the colored kind of bar, you're seeing, well, how much time does it take you to open the mail or print those invoices that are el already electronic? Is it 30 minutes? Is it 30 minutes a day? Is it an hour, right? How much are you spending stamping that with a traditional rubber you know, stamp and an ink, ink pad and writing GL codes, right? How long does that take? Took them four hours every day, right? How about the approval process? What's going on at the approval process? How long does it take? What is the related financial implication? How much are you spending on your physical data entry? And then how much time are you spending at the filing cabinets to file away? Now, that's a really simple example, and it doesn't even touch on when we start introducing matching. But by sharing this, I'm hoping to kind of help you think about, oh, yes, the processes are, you know, really needing to be improved. And with DocLink, we can solve that entire chain, right? And really, really eliminate. I think the organization, they were able to get a 62% savings on AP's time. They had a split function where half of the team was doing GL coding, some of the team was doing ERP entry. And so think about that. They had two different savings. I was calculating about 60% savings on both of those areas. So what is that? One and a half FTEs, you know? So um, I, get, I get excited about this because I want to see organizations have an opportunity to work really, really efficiently and then just be super competitive in the marketplace. All right. Let's kind of continue on. Um, now, the previous example was just kind of a simple, maybe non-purchase order based invoice. But I want you to know that there are opportunities, especially with DocLink, in this entire chain. So, you know, the vision here would be, well, what about if we did a requisition in DocLink and routed that through an approval process? and then took that requisition document and all of the data and automatically created the purchase order in the ERP. Would it be helpful if we automatically sent that out to the vendor? Maybe the vendor also requires some kind of supporting document. Would we want to bring in that vendor confirmation email to this overall packet that we're storing in DocLink and is visible in your accounting software? Do we want to store the packing slip and facilitate the receiving entry? Capture maybe the receiving report that is generated. Now the invoice is arriving and now we need to do that three-way matching. Is it important to do to leverage OCR and, and leverage technology for you? 
right? So you see, and then also capture evidence that the payment has taken place. And now we've got this entire packet easily searchable by all of the transactional data and really, really makes it very easy to just enable the organization, um, not only for remote workers, you know, but for anyone that's in the office as well. All right, tell me, tell me about your dreams. <laughs> what is your AP automation dream? And then we'll kind of take a look at a little sample, and look at some of the screenshots. All right, so I see the poll up there. What's important to your organization? Do you need the full system from requisitions all the way through to capturing payments? Maybe requisitions aren't important for you and you're just really curious about the purchase order capture. Some people want to send it automatically, others do not all the way through. Maybe you are a non-PO organization. You don't do distribution or manufacturing and so it's really more of non-POs. Maybe matching is your issue, right? Or maybe you're all, ah, oh, this is not my area of concern. I really am attending because I wanted to explore the quote to cash side of things. Okay. All right. So let's see. I'm going to come back to you, Sophia. What have we got? What What's on? Are people rapidly chained, you know, picking their answers? Yeah, it looks like so far it's kind of a tie between the full P2P system and automate two-way and three-way matching. Oh, excellent, excellent. So for those folks, um, and, and also people uh, attend webinars in different areas of their evaluation. So please reach out to your RKL representative and um, let them know that you want to do what's called a discovery call. We can uh, sit with you, whether it's on the phone, you know, and in person and really map out what's going on in your organization where those bottlenecks are occurring and then that way we can help you know show you not only how doclink can work for your organization uh, but get some quotes out in front of you so that you kind of have an understanding of what it would cost uh, to invest in the solution oh and i see the answers there yes yes yeah at, at automated matching you know there's there's a huge opportunity there to really streamline that process all right, let me show you a little bit of um, what the application looks like, and then we'll get into the quote cash, quote to cash side of the house. So this, um, especially for those looking for a full P2P system. So what you're seeing on the screen here is an example of what I would call a smart form. Um, in this case, it's geared towards a requisition, and this is allowing users to sign in. Um, notice they have these, um, um microscope what is, what is i can't remember what the word is the microscope that is actually part of the integration with your accounting software mm -hmm. so we can tie into looking at the vendors right and pull in uh, other information that's tied to the vendor master right same thing with items if we want to pull in items you know we can do that as well um so that's part of the integration so this is the form that we could use to say, let's produce that requisition and now we're gonna route it through the approval process using DocLink workflow to make sure that it's fully approved. And then we're gonna automatically take that document and the data and create a purchase order automatically right in your accounting software. Once that's happened, we can capture the purchase order as well. So you see that not only are we looking at the screens here, but we are looking at that purchase order that came from your ERP. The nice thing here is that we are capturing both the image and all of the metadata about this document. That metadata or document properties is super, super important because now think about all the different ways that you could actually access the document. You can view it right in the screen just by the click of a button and see everything that relates to that PO. Or you can look in DocLink and be searching for any of this data. Hey, show me everything related to that vendor or vendor number or invoice when it's, you know, when the invoice has arrived. So the whole point here is it's giving you a lot of agility and access. Let's 
progress to the invoice, right? You have an opportunity to leverage OCR, optical character recognition, to automatically capture the image. You see that on the right-hand side and all of the data, including line item information, because that's gonna tee us up for the automated matching, which you also selected in that previous slide, right? So this can be huge. And then if we've used OCR to extract the data, we no longer are having to do data entry. We're now validating only. And then of course, we're looking at an automated match. And that automated matching is really important because now you no longer have to match the physical documents. The system is doing that automatically. The system is looking at all of the table information, what was physically received, what was physically in the purchase order table information, what's on the invoice, and if it matches 100% or tolerance of your choice, it'll automatically create the transaction. If it doesn't match, then it's up to you. In your business today, what happens if something doesn't match? Do we want to route it back to the buyer or to someone in purchasing, right? Does it go back to the warehouse? A lot of different possibilities, and that's what we would do in the business process mapping is help you think about, you know, how we want this to be set up but it's all possible here. All right, quote to cash. Let's talk about that. Now, hopefully by now, you're really getting the vision that it doesn't matter to DocLink what the business process is. There is an opportunity to just simply think about what is the document that you're concerned with? How do we want this to flow through your organization? How do we want to transact that document and data? And then who needs to search and retrieve it, right? So here on the, you know, we, you know, the business process, we kind of mislabel it as sales order, but it's really quote to cash. Do you start with quotes in your organization or does your business process start with a customer PO? Would it not be magical if we could actually OCR extract the customer PO and then put that through a business process and automatically create the sales order, right? So how much time is being spent on data entry on that step? What if we want to capture the sales order acknowledgement and send that out automatically, right? Maybe the business process is more specific to, ah, you know what, that's okay. I'm a little bit more, you know, um, uh, conservative when I want to go with technology. So I'm just going to start on the AR invoice side because that's really my big problem. You know, so in the AR invoice side, we want to say, all right, we want to be able to streamline the delivery of the AR invoice. We want to be able to not only send the AR invoice, but we want to send some other kind of supporting document. And why? We're driving time savings on the manual effort that it takes today. And we're getting that invoice more rapidly out to the right, uh, you know, contact or contacts of the customer so that they can pay more rapidly as well. And then lastly, we've got documents easily referenceable by all of that data, AR invoice number, sales order number, uh, customer name, customer number, all of that data now becomes your search fields. So you've got easy access to documents to respond to customer inquiries. There's huge savings here. I mean, like this particular company, um, I'm actually physically in California. So they're up a little bit north of me, but they were able to cut down the time that they were spending to print, collate with backup, re-push into email, you know, and send it out by 90%. You know, now maybe that was, you know, an extreme example, but think about what you're doing today manually what kind of savings would you be able to get in your organization? All right, so there's a lot of opportunity here. So let's kind of get a little bit of feedback. I'm curious to know kind of what's going on for you folks and where are your kind of biggest issues on the sales order side of things or that quote to cash equation? Thank you, I see the poll up here. So let's kind of explore this. Where do you want efficiency? What's most critical to your organization? Is it the automatic customer PO creation or I can't even talk. the automatic sales order creation from a customer PO, right? Is that the issue? 
Are you wanting to send documents out automatically, sales order acknowledgements, AR invoices, et cetera? Right? Some people say, hey, listen, I just actually really need to track all the documents by a part number. That's the biggest need. And it may be E. Hey, I was more interested in the P2P stuff. I don't really need to, to be worried about the quote to cash side of the house. So feel free to pick the options that are that are most important to you. And then we can kind of see what's going on there. All right. Sophia, what are we getting for answers? Is everyone is everyone rapidly clicking and playing along? <laughs> Yeah, it looks like our top answer so far is I want to track the entire document packet. Okay, very cool, very cool. So he, here again, I just want to invite you to um, you know reach out to RKL. They can set up that discovery call. And then part of what we can do is we want to be asking, all right, what's the document? Oh, it's a certificate of analysis or it's a certificate, a heat treat cert or, you know, it's um, something else, right? And so we're asking the questions like this. We say, okay, what's the document? How is the document produced today? That's going to tell us what methodology do we want to capture the document by. Next step is, does that document need to travel through a particular business process? That's where we're using workflow. And there's rules that we can invite into the equation and all sorts of automation to make sure it's getting to the right person and that we're providing them with very easy tools for approval. Then the next question is, all right, do we want to then update a transaction with that document and data? In this particular example, it's taking the customer PO and then creating the sales order, right? And then ultimately it's, do we want to route documents outside the organization? That would be the sending of the AR invoice, the sales order acknowledgements. And at the end of the day, who needs to see what and by what criteria? And that's your tracking documents by the part number, okay? All right, very good. Thank you for participating, everyone. It's always nice to know kind of what's going on. All right, so let's continue our exploration. So I wanna to touch on um, HR and contract management and, and then we'll kind of like wrap up. Um, HR, so here is yet another opportunity. So I always like people to say, well, let's just think about it for a moment. What's in your HR filing cabinets? Right, and what are the issues on the business process that we want to try and facilitate? Anything is possible, right? It may be that you have the biggest kind of consternation uh, related to your onboarding process. It may be that you want to kind of do automated delivery of employee documents, that's another area. I like the expediting employee applications. We know that there is a lot of uh, change going on in the marketplace and a lot of movement, you know, new positions, new opportunities. So that might be more important. I mean, wouldn't that be beautiful if you get an application, you can route it in workflow for some kind of review and approval. Um, use DocLink as a portal for all documents for your employees. I mean, there's a lot of benefits that we can do here. And typically what I see happening is that, yes, the primary goal may be on the AP side, or the quote to cash side. But once you're up and running on those, then you can start exploring these other areas as well. And then have one solution that can easily address all business requirements, you know, versus having to, to purchase multiples. All right, but back to our HR story. Um, so in this particular case, very, very large uh, supermarket chain, and they had two different areas. You know, they also they had AP that they wanted to focus on, but they also wanted to do HR automation, and they really took it and run with it. So you can also, with training, um, you know, extend the solution yourself and be self-sufficient, right? But they used it for so many different cool things, a resume bank. Um, they, they did it for, you know, employee events, you know, and competing against one another. Um, all sorts of different, you know, approvals and document requests, you know, went through uh, DocLink for them. And they were able to just, just drive that kind of productivity and, and time savings gains. So if HR is important, you know, let us know and we can kind of explore that together more deeply. Contract management is a fun one. 
Here again, we're kind of using the basic tenants of DocLink to be able to um, save money, right? I was talking with an organization recently and their big issue was um, certificates of insurance. And so what had happened was is that um, similar to, to the Econo supermarket chain um, needed to have insurance documents available. Um, and they had an accident and one of the insurance certs had expired and it caused a very, very significant penalty for them. So if they had had DocLink and were have you know put contracts in DocLink, monitored them by expiration date, and when that expiration date was getting close, maybe move it out to a workflow so someone could actively manage it or get an email alert, it would have been much, much more easier for them to respond, you know, to that to that injury. Um, so that's just another way that you can use contracts uh, in terms of being able to, you know, help make sure that you've got the right documents and the right people kind of connected. Okay, and then think about all the different kinds of, of documents that you have. I mean, it could be, you know, lease agreements, employee contracts, really anything. And the whole goal here is to say, well, what would you like to do, right? DocLink can do a lot, but let's kind of refine it down to what's important to your organization. Do you simply want to store these documents in one central area? That's a possibility. Do you want to take it to the next level and let's start getting creative? We want to monitor those expiration dates and then maybe push it out to a workflow you know, in order to have someone monitoring the contract expirations, you know, so that you can, you know, more, more actively go after those and, and take the right action. Do you simply want, is that maybe overkill? And instead you want to just do alerts, you know, alert someone via email. Hey, we've got contracts expiring in 30 days, you know, please make sure your team is, you know, appropriately negotiating those terms or whatever the case is. You know, and then it kind of comes back to, you know, making a full circle of you have documents in DocLink um, available for easy access using all of that metadata. Okay, so that kind of builds out a nice little mini use case for you to think about um, and in terms of contract management. All right, and we just talked about this, so I'm going to skip this particular slide for now. Um, let's talk about, though, a little bit about security and uh, keeping everything safe, safe and sound. So number one is do think about all the documents that are important in your organization. And, you know, if you can think about all of these different areas, you know, all of them can be used and stored in DocLink for easy search and retrieval. Um, plus having access within your ERP for those documents that are physically transactional related. What I really want you to think about, though, is starting to think about these areas where what happens if you are storing things manually and we have, um, you know, just a, a weather-based disaster. Um, here in California, we have earthquakes. Um, other folks have tornadoes, right? But what would happen to your organization if you weren't able to get to the filing cabinets, right? That could be a big problem. Um, you know, are you able to keep your business going remotely? Um, do you have your business processes mapped out, you know, and, and can we think about those areas of automation? Um, what are your compliance rules? You know, do your teams have access via a mobile device or web access? All of these questions become important even specific to document management and workflow so that we can continue the, the organizations to be at the ready, you know, and, and be able to do anything that they want to. I like this example. Well, I, I, it's, well it's a horrific, but it's, a, it's very visual, right? And, and this particular company, a long, long-term uh, company of DocLink, uh, but then they, here's what they say, right? When we purchased DocLink, we created a long list of reasons, you know, an RFI um, as to why we needed to buy this particular solution. Um, however, 
surviving an F5 tornado was not one of them. So they really, really told a story um, about how they had um, from the tornado huge amounts of damage, you know, for the company and vehicles and whatnot. But what specifically kind of stuck in my mind is they had a tree pierce their legal filing cabinets. And so obviously, you know, legal was in a bit of a world of hurt. Um, AP had gone paperless, so that was really super easy for them to get back up and running. You know, but again, you know, really starts begging the question about, you know, what are your plans in those areas? Let's talk a little bit about compliance. Do a little bit of a shift here and, and start thinking about, all right, so let's say that it's audit time and you need to prepare for an audit, you know, and think about that process. Um, I was on site visiting a customer and they had boxes and boxes stacked outside the controller's office. And um, I, you know, I asked them, okay, you know, what's in the boxes? And they said, oh, you know what? We actually had an audit six months ago and we just haven't gotten to putting the paper back. And I thought that was just, you know, I mean, for me, you know, I, it, it giggled a little bit only because, gosh, if they had had DocLink, you know, they wouldn't have had to pull the boxes, uh, make copies while the auditors were there, and then they wouldn't have had to put those boxes away because everything would have been right at their fingertips and they would have had choices. You know, do you want to just download some documents to the auditors? Are they coming into your office? Do you not want, do you want to maybe just simply give them access, you know, and restrict what they have access to? So there's a lot of different possibilities. Um, security. Now, I get this question often because as we start thinking about, you know, all the different business processes that are out there, um, security becomes really important. And so people want to know that, yes, you can actually secure documents at the highest levels of company level. How many companies do you have set up in your database today? Right. So you can separate documents by company. And then the next step is you can also separate documents by the various departments that you have. And you can even get more granular to document type and then even further, you know, restrict by property value. So simple example back to AP would be, you know, allowing managers access to the documents that they approve. Uh, on the HR side, it's restricting employees to only have access to their particular documents. You know, so there's a lot of possibilities in terms of, of just making sure that only the right people have the right access to the right documents and no one else can have access. Oh, you know, what? and think about using um, DocLink as a vendor portal or a customer portal as well. So that's another possibility. You know, wouldn't it be cool if you could have your customers sign in and have access to just the documents for them, you know, or your vendors? So that's just another kind of layer, I think, and, and helps tell the security story. All right, so we're really on the home stretch, just a couple more slides here. Just to really round everything out, you know, let's kind of leave you with a couple things to think about. And then I have a, a, a question on your document management journey here. But I want you to think about, you know, the whole, you know, aspect of can you purchase something, you know, that is going to handle multiple business processes? You know, have you investigated your particular processes in terms of what are you doing in the area today? Where do you think the broken pieces are, the broken steps? You know, what is the financial implication? That's critical. And then with those tools in place, then I think it makes it very easy to go after a solution and know very, very well as to what you need and why, because you've done the homework of mapping the business process, understanding the financial implications, securing the budget, and choosing something that's going to be best for your organization. All right, so let me help you with your document management journey. Um, there are a lot of different things that we can provide you, and I think it really depends on kind of where you are in the journey. Are you just starting? You know, are you already actively looking for solutions? But there's lots that we can provide. So would you be interested in receiving a document management checklist? So it's a kind of a checklist that will help you with all these different questions on if document management is right for you. 
Um, it may be that you want to share this particular recording with another team member. That was something we can offer. It may be that you really want to have that, we call it a discovery call, but it's a meeting where we can help you map your business processes and calculate the cost of doing business manually because you want to set a budget for a future purchase, All right? We would do a similar thing if you're wanting to say, okay, that's great, but I actually want to make a decision and a purchase and get implemented by a particular date and time. I'm seeing that, you know, October, November, December are becoming in more and more focus. Let us know. We can certainly support you with that. Um, or, you know what, you simply want to meet with your RKL rep and have a conversation about these particular items and just explore them a little bit more in depth. So feel free to pick, you know, one or more that's important to you, and that'll help us get the right information out to you. Um, so I think I'm going to hold off on getting any feedback on that. Um, Sophia, we can kind of take that offline if you like. And let's see. I think next. Oh, so this is really cool. So um, for those of you that are looking at making a kind of a, a selection, a decision, and a purchase, then you are able to get 10% off Docklink subscription orders. And that's until September 30th. So what does that give you? Um, August, two months, right? That That's a lot of time to go through an evaluation. So that's plenty of time. Um, so for those of you that are really, really interested in, you know, getting on the calendar, you know, making this happen, you know, that would be available to you. Okay. So I think I'm going to leave you with, um, we can open it up for Q&A. And if anything has kind of resonated with you today, then please reach out to RKL and they'll be able to make the right um, introductions, et cetera. So I think, Sophia, with that, I'm going to come back to you. We can leave this slide up for a little bit, and that way, you know, people know who to call if they, you know, or, or if they don't know who their rep is, reach out to marketing, and they'll get you in touch with your right sales rep as well. Yeah, thank you, Perry Lynn. Um, yeah, we're going to open up the floor for any questions at this moment. Again, you can use the Q&A feature. Um, just put it in the chat, and we'll try to answer it as soon as possible. Perfect. And I'm going to look, oh, look as well. Make sure I have the chat open. All right. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay. It looks like we have a few questions. Okay. So to begin, uh, for OCR, does the invoice uh, number have to be in the same place on the invoice for every vendor? No, no, it does not. So that's what's amazing about OCR is it now is using artificial intelligence and machine learning. So you don't have to set up templates. You don't have to do any of that. The system is using very sophisticated algorithms to look at the invoice, look at things like invoice number, like a hash mark, right, or NO, you know, or, you know, all those variations. And then it's looking to the right or up above or left. The system is already doing that for you. So it's completely acceptable to have many, many different kinds of formats of invoices coming in and being able to leverage OCR to extract the data. Um, so there, yeah, thank you. Good question. Great. Okay. Next question. Okay. Uh, we have over 500 employees. Would each employee require an account? The process begins with an employee raising a purchase request. Okay. Got it. So, so then you're looking at that requisition model. 500 employees. So no, you do not have to have a license for every single employee. So in Docklink specifically, we are using a concurrent license metaphor. So we look at your total population of users, and then we say, all right, how many people will need to be logged in at the same moment in time? That's the concurrency count that you would need for your organization. And so because of the laws of concurrency, you know, we can really take a large population and squish it into smaller user licenses, you know, for that reason. Great. Okay, we have another question. How well does OCR capture invoice details? Most of our invoices have POs and would not require routing for approval. How well does the system detect the PO on the invoice? 
Oh, okay. Got it. It, it does it exceptionally. So for the, and this is kind of similar to the other question where it's using that AI and machine learning to kind of, you know, sleuth out, eliminate all the other bits and pieces, you know, that's on the invoice and go after that data that we're going to need to extract and transform. Um, so it does an exceptional job. You can, people want percent rates and percent rates always get harder and harder because it does depend on how did the invoice come in? Was it generated from a computer? Did it arrive in my email? And that's why I'm able to use OCR to extract the data. Or is it handwritten? Handwritten, not so good. Coming from a computer, you're probably looking at 90, 95% accuracy, again, if that image is clean. Good questions. Great. We have a couple more. So okay. with AP and AR, if I'm coding it in Doclink, is it creating a file to import to the software I'm using for accounting? Yes, yes, it is. So what's happening there is, yeah, it's taking the data and then depending on kind of the, the use case, it's automatically just creating that document behind the scenes in your ERP. So that's where you're getting, you know, no more data entry and you can even do things on the front end to kind of drive productivity as well. Great. Okay. And another one? Um, I am assuming that the view document button is also on general ledger detail screens. So if someone looks at a GL detail, they can drill down on the expense and see the invoice. Yes, yes. That view documents button is actually prolific throughout the application. And it does allow for that drill down and drill around functionality. Oh my gosh, that person gets a gold star for their, um, the power of, of observation and really looking at that view documents button. So well done. <laughs> Great. And we have one last question, as I can see now. Um, how can I acquire DocLink? On-prem, cloud-hosted provider, monthly subscription, pay-as-you-go? Mm, okay, good. Yes. So you actually have all of those options. Um, so you can, if, if um, deploying on-premise is your choice, then you can either buy the software outright and purchase services to get it installed, or you can actually purchase a subscription model. So you're just paying one annual fee and you know, throughout the usage of the software. And again, with services to implement, um, you would have an option also of using DocLink Cloud. So if going to the cloud is kind of more of your business direction, then we can deploy it in DocLink Cloud and that has a subscription model attached to it as well. Great, thank you. You're welcome. So I'll pause just for a couple more seconds just to see if we have any more questions coming in. Sounds good. I'm looking at my clock and we did really well. So we just just <laughs> at the hour mark almost exactly. So that worked out really nicely with all the Q&A. Thanks for everyone uh, participating. Yeah, so if that's all the questions we have, I want to again thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, we will be sending out an email with the recording and slides and uh, we hope to see you at our next webinar in the Summer of Automation series. Thank you. Thanks, Sophia. Goodbye, everyone.